Kia ora. welcome back to another video from NZ Trading. I've been working through a bunch of things that I think there's a lack of resources for online and today I'm going to talk a bit about switchboards. I'm not going to fully wire one up but I'm going to talk about a bunch of aspects of a switchboard and some of the rules. One of the big things to note about switchboards is that you have to be a qualified electrician or an electrical worker to be able to work on or install a switchboard. There's a number of things you can do as a homeowner, but installing a switchboard isn't one of them. So, basic construction of a switchboard. Obviously you have the switchboard, you have what are called DIN rails here. Two DIN rails in this one, a PDL and Vinco are the main two switchboards that we install. So you can see here you've got your earth and your neutral bars. You also have screw points for them at the top so that you could take the bar off and put it at the top or bottom depending on which way you put the board in originally. So you can always change that round. As far as putting cables into these bars, this is what they call a tunnel type connection. See, little holes in there like tunnels. Either you have to have two screws or the screw has to be at least 80% of the diameter of the hole. And so these screws here are 80%, but this one and this one are a bigger hole for, say, your neutral, which might be a 16mm or larger. It has two screws because it's a bigger hole and the screws aren't 80% of the hole size. So there's two main ways that you could wire this up. One would be that you're just looping wires from one to the next, which is fine. The other way is they give you bus bars. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a bus bar. But a bus bar or a comb is just a piece of copper with a cover on it. And it lets you connect from one breaker to the next quite easily without looping a wire from one to the next. The problem with a comb is, is as you can see here, these two terminals are vastly different. These two are not too bad, but if we put a third one in like this, you can see the height at which the comb gets clamped down on is different. So see, this one here is a little bit lower than this one here, and then this one here is a little bit higher again. So if you're trying to clamp a comb into this, the chances that you get a loose termination are much higher. A good rule of thumb is if you want to use a comb, then you need to make sure that you've got all the same breakers. So some of the devices you have are a main switch, an MCB or a miniature circuit breaker, an RCBO and an RCD. These are miniature circuit breakers and this is another style of RCBO, so I'll just pop this one in next to it. So you can see that even the same products can be very different. So you can get this double pole one or a single pole one. These ones are really good. This is just a bit of an older style. So the difference between an RCBO and an RCD, RCD stands for residual current device, whereas an RCBO stands for residual current breaker overload. So an RCBO has the MCB, miniature circuit breaker, built into it as well. Whereas an RCD only is the RCD, so that's the protection for your, from your earth. And then you need to put breakers on afterwards. RCBO protects one circuit. and RCD, you can put up to three breakers on it. Now some of your switchboards at home will have more breakers on the RCD then three and that's because the rules changed over time. The rule now is three breakers per RCD. One of the things that makes an RCBO so good is that if you're only adding one sub circuit to an existing switchboard, you only use up one space instead of an RCD and an MCB, which would use three spaces. Main switches are just a switch. They do have a current rating on them and that is their maximum rated capacity. Some of the other rules to note about switchboards is that all of your switches must be off in the same direction. Your minimum size cable from breaker to breaker is four mil. Your main earth needs to be at least six mil. You can be bigger, 
um, but that is the minimum size for a main earthing system and you must have at least one earth tag on it. It can be in the switchboard or at the peg but it requires one. Now there's plenty of places that you can't put a switchboard. There's a whole section on locations for switchboards. One of them that you cannot put them in a bathroom, full stop, doesn't matter what you do to it, it cannot go in a bathroom. There's lots of rules and regulations about them being in cupboards, around cupboards. If you're doing a commercial switchboard and it's going inside a switchboard room, there's rules about which ways the doors can and can't face and how big the doors have to be. As I said, I'm not actually going to wire this, but I will draw how you could wire this pretty easily. Um, just so that you've got a bit of a mental image of how that would work. So I'll get into that now. I'll just speed the drawing up and then I will walk you through it afterwards. So I've used the breakers just because it makes it a bit easier to see. So we've got our mains coming in the top of the main switch here. Out of the main switch it links to all our breakers, so it goes from to this 40 amp, to the RCBO and to this RCD. Now you'll see the RCBO has an N here for neutral and that's the active side. So this one does matter, neutral and phase does matter where it goes, this one here doesn't. So we've gone phase in here and phase in here. The phase then out of the RCBO goes to, I've just labelled it hot point, so it just goes to a circuit of whatever you wanted it to be. The phase that goes into this RCD comes up, across and feeds our three breakers, and then our three breakers go to whatever circuits they're on. With our neutral, we've got a neutral that feeds this RCBO, and the hot point neutral goes straight into the RCBO, not into a neutral bar. The RCD also gets fed from the neutral bar. Out of the other side of the RCD, it goes to an RCD bar, which is one of these smaller bars just here. Now circuit neutrals come back to this RCD bar, not to the neutral bar. If you bring them back to the neutral bar, you'll trip the RCD. Then you've got an earth bar, which also will end up having all of the earths from your circuits on it, and the MEN link. New Zealand uses an MEN system, so in all main switchboards or all switchboards that have an earth peg driven, you should have an MEN link for it. That's all for switchboards today. I hope this wiring diagram has been helpful to you. And as always, follow for more from an NZ Tradie.